do you have any statistics that you can share with our viewers and our listeners, Constantinos, with respect to um, legally owned guns and uh, some of the benefits, let's say, if you have, if you can find in your, it, that you found in your statistical research of, have, of having a gun as a legally, legally own, legal owner. Uh, and we'll take it from there because I think a lot of that will address uh, and then we'll get slowly back into the uh, black market versus how, how much do we strike a balance that Nana was discussing. Thanks, Ian. So the, the significant figure, I think the, the, the most compelling one is the, is the clear distinction that homicides committed by legal owned firearms compared to those that are in the general public that don't include legally owned firearms. So the homicide rate in Canada, and I'll, I'll bring up the, the, the share screen to show you, the homicide rate in Canada um, in, in legally owned law abiding citizens in the country is 0 0.6 per 100,000 people on a national scale. And this is on average every year since like uh, 15 to 20 years. And the, and the homicide rate in Canada including, because you, you can't exclude that portion of the statistic, but including law-abiding gun owners, on top of the rest of uh, Canada, on, on all homicides that occur in Canada with firearms, 1.81 out of 100,000 homicides, uh, 100,000 people per year. Are attributable to legally owned firearms? No, legally owned is 0 0.61. And then the rest of Canada, homicides committed with firearms, mm -hmm. including, but also every other firearm that we cannot right. confirm are legal, are, are conducted by, uh, are, are, are done at a rate of 1.81. So the homicide rate is significantly more than two times higher when you include gun, uh, gun deaths or homicides committed by firearms mm -hmm. uh, in general, compared to homicides committed by firearms that are legally owned by uh, law-abiding citizens. So this just goes to the core of the prohibition and the ban on uh, that the order and council wishes to impose mm -hmm. is that the guns that are now being uh, illegalized across the board, these, it's, it's actually more than 1,500 now that reached over 2,000 something guns because they just keep adding um, without actually properly notifying the public. So someone could, you know, and I'm not going to say that ignorance is a defense to, uh, is, is a defense in, in the law, but when you're just imposing certain things sort of on a back channel and that sort of goes to the picture of how this ordering council you need was public made. notice. Right. So you have all these firearms that, that, yes. that are being addressed as illegal and those guns throughout history studies show that the only, and, the, and the, the other point that I want to make is that the idea that the studies that have been conducted in Canada. Okay. And I'm speaking just in Canada because this is the ordering council in Canada, and sure. we can look at other countries as well. But the empirical evidence is insufficient to show over the last 20 years that there is any, uh, any accurate uh, representation or any accurate um, recommendation that, that scientists or that gun uh, people who study guns can actually make to the government to impose a new legislation. Right. So with that being said, just because there hasn't been enough study, there hasn't been enough in-depth study over the last 20 years, so that says that any type of new legislation moving forward, and this includes the, the, the May 1st Ordering Council, cannot be recommended. And so it just, it just means that what the Prime Minister has done has not been empirically based on scientific study. It, it cannot actually be based on scientific study, which the evidence shows and the recommendations by these leading criminologists uh, say. So let's show our viewers. Let's show them your particular so, uh, sites or your sources. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. Yeah. And see. If uh, I'm correct. Do, this, do triggers pull fingers, Constantinos? Yeah, I have that one open here. So okay, I've got a few. I've got a few. Um, a few, and so they're all journal articles. They're all uh, peer edited, peer reviewed journal articles. Uh, public. Gary Moser. Pardon? Yes. So this Gary Moser. He's a doctor. Uh, he's a, obviously a doctor. He's a, a criminologist in Canada. Um, I forget which university he works out of. But I've, I've taken the time because this is a 31 page document. I don't want to bore the audience, but I've taken the time to highlight a few of the key facts in the, in the, in the journal as well as the other ones. So in the beginning, it just talks a little bit about um, the ownership, the, the, the breakdown of gun ownership in Canada. And 
I think one of the major statistics that really was drawn to me initially when I looked at this was that uh, was the, were these numbers right here. And it shows, so this, this short paragraph basically tells us that surveys find that Canadians use firearms to protect themselves or their families between 60,000 and 80,000 times per year, per year from dangerous people or animals. So just to give you some, some uh, context, earlier in the, in, the, in the few paragraphs before, it talks about the history and the reason why most Canadians uh, wish to own and continue to possess and utilize firearms. Yes. Hunting is one of those reasons. And um, the, 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 the whole notion that Canada was uh, created by hunters and gatherers, you know, it goes on a historical context. I wanna, if I may please pause you for a quick second, Constantinos. I want to turn our debate back to where we earlier were, uh, where we were earlier with uh, Nana, uh, just before the end of our first segment. Now, Nana, we were all discussing about, and if, Constantinos, if you can please keep this page open. We were talking about the guns that will be existent regardless of regulation, ergo the illegally owned smuggled guns. And then right. you said, well, look, crime, your argument, as I recall, crime is always going to exist. Well, right. in contrast to that, our statistics here clearly shows that uh, this, this, this statistics proves that it's an accepted fact that uh, domestic violence or rather uh, home violence is going to occur. Now, it doesn't specifically show that someone is protecting themselves and their families from gun violence, but it is, it is showing that guns are successfully used to defend violence. So. Sure. Would that not bode in the direction that lenient gun uh, prohibitions are favorable, and that you know but, uh, the but but I think I, mm -hmm. I think I think I think that's a conflation of two things. I think you're trying because the government the, the the legislation is not taking guns away, right? This this doesn't say what kind of guns are being used here in defense. It doesn't say that assault style rifles were used in. I don't see it say anywhere that assault style rifles were used. I just want to make I just want to make the connection to you because uh, the the, the fifteen hundred plus ban is not is not on only on assault style rifles. It's gone way beyond that. So the idea that the gun ban only targets assault style rifles is is false. And there okay. are, there are there are hand there are many handguns and many different types of firearms, not including long guns, which can only be classified as assault style, that are also included in this. Uh, this blanket ban but, but here's my question and, and the question remains the same are they banning all guns they're, they're trying to ban uh no no it's not trying guns. are they banning all guns no not uh, all guns are being okay banned. and this statistic says that firearms protect between 60 to eighty thousand. it doesn't say so as long as firearms are available there is you can still use those firearms to protect your family 60 to 80,000 times, doesn't it? Doesn't that, isn't that what that, this means? Yes. Okay, so th that it, I, I understand how you can attempt to relate it to the, to the, um, to the, the, the order that's being passed, but I don't see a direct correlation because I think but firearms are still available word? to the public. But is there a direct correlation here in Canada that these so-called assault-style firearms are used in crimes every day that those numbers well, okay. over are, are more than the numbers that Constantino uh, Constantino's just presented. Well, well, here, here, here's my here's my argument with regards to gun crime or gun or the usage of guns in general. Okay, and I know that we aren't necessarily supposed to compare between countries, but if we're using Canada as a baseline in a comparison to other countries, I believe that's permitted. Correct. Uh, we c you can draw on comparative law arguments and comparative okay. uh, facts. So, so, so this this was a to statement. A certain degree, that, though. Okay, and and you can let me know if this is like I mean if I have to scratch this off the record, but this is something that I read, and I wanted to bring to light. So it says while rates of homicide without guns in the U.S. are only slightly higher, one point three times than in Canada, gun rates of homicide or rates of homicide with guns are much higher, at least, which is 7.3 times, at least half the handguns recovered, uh, I mean, in the US. So in the US, homicides with guns are 7.3 times higher than they are in Canada, although 
um, rates of homicide without guns are basically equal. Um, and it also says that at least half the handguns recovered in crimes or have it, half the handguns or recovered in crime originate in the US in large part because they do not have effective controls. So what's happening is that if they don't have effective controls over guns, eventually there's, this is, this is statistical proof, right? That gun violence is, is. No, because this goes to the fundamental issue that it doesn't address whether those guns are being committed. Those homicides that you're accounting for are being committed by lawfully owned firearms. It doesn't right. do that. And that's the flaw in most of these studies. The flaw is that when you take into account firearm homicides in a country okay. like the United States or in Canada, sure. it, doesn't, it doesn't make the dichotomy of legal versus illegally owned purchase or legally possessed firearms. Most, okay. I'm, I'm, I don't have the statistic in front of me, but I'm sure if you Google it and if you can find the, the number of homicides in the U.S. that are committed by illegally owned firearms, meaning ga uh, guns related to gangs, drug dealing, uh, drug dealing and uh, organized crime, that's a predominant number of illegally owned firearms. And okay. they make up a majority of, uh, of, uh, of homicides. Actually, I, I remember the statistic. This statistic always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Only 3% of homicides related to firearms in the United States, now you could look this up, only 3% are actually committed uh, through mass shootings in, in the country of the United States. Okay. So out of 100% out of, out of, of all homicide-related deaths in the United States, only 3% are ever committed in a mass shooting. That okay. means 97% of gun shootings, we, we, uh, we cannot equate or equate for or account for uh, to be directly linked to uh, uh, mass shooting incidents. And so here's a question. Do you think that there are more illegal guns in the States than there are in Canada? I would, I would only, I'm not sure, but I would say there are probably more illegal guns in, in the United States, just because demographically speaking, 300 uh, million people. Yeah. Per gun owner, per gun owner, they have a lot more guns. And in, it's, they, it's constitutional right in the States. So you have okay. a right to bear arms in the States. It's not okay, you but have a right I, to bear arms in Canada. I, I, I get that. But I, I, and again, I'm bringing that back to, I'm bringing that back to something. So, so the line of questioning is leading to something. So, okay. Let's even say per capita. Okay. Per person. Let's say, do you think that there are more illegal guns per person in the States than the, in the States than there are in Canada? It would be I safe. believe that. Would be safe to okay. assume that that's a possibility. Why do you think that is? Why do I think that there's more guns per capita yes, more, in the United States? More illegal guns per capita in the United or, States than in Canada. More gun regulation. Because, <laughs> yes, because there's less gun regulation in the States than in Canada, but, right? But now, that poor gun regulation, that's pouring into Canada. Because now those guns are able, or they're, uh, yes, they're able to be smuggled here in Canada. And that, and then those guns are used in illegal manners, or they're 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 used to for 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 crimes, murder, etc. So not only so not only do we already have strict gun measures here in Canada, but now because of the um, the weak gun laws in the United States, in particular states or whatever, or because there's a a, a a huge a huge influx of illegal firearms that pours into Canada. So doesn't that does that not does that not say that we should, instead of banning the guns that are usually not involved or there is little, uh, little, uh, little violence with them, should we not put more resources into defending the border or securing our borders to ensure that the poor regulations that they have over there does not pour into our country? But you see, my, that, my argument here is simple because the question was, what is the current gun ban doing to address gun crime? Correct. And you just said the reason why there are more guns in the States is because they have poor gun regulation. Harsh, uh, the, the, the gun ban that's happening right now is a harsh gun regulation, but it's a necessary gun regulation because, oh. be, 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 because in the States where they have more lenient gun regulations, there are more illegal guns. But which no, no. And, and, and so the, those guns, it's not like they're being sold here or they're they're being uh, brought no, but, here. But, 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 but here's my point. Here's my point, right? You, you you said that it's safe to assume that there are more illegal guns per person in the states than in Canada. Because yes. and, and then I asked why. And you said it's because the state has poor gun regulation laws. I, I, Am I, am I, are you following, like, am I making sense so far? Yeah. Okay. 
Now, so the, the reason for a per capita higher number of illegal guns in the states is because their gun laws are not as strict as the ones in Canada. Correct. The current ban is a stricter gun law than the, than the, the gun laws we had before. But you are is only not? No, no, no. I, I mean, I mean, I, I'm just, but I'm just curious. Is the current ban not a stricter gun law? Than the irrespective, law that we had irrespective of the, irrespective of those, uh, of those limitations imposed by law, we have all agreed that illegally owned guns are nonetheless going to be floating around. And, I agree. But, and but uh, in, also, in relation to your previous point, when you said why, when you asked Dan Constantinos, why do more illegally guns mm -hmm. exist in the States? I would say there are more gun manufacturers. Why are there more gun, if more, more, why are there more gun manufacturers? Is because uh, it's a bigger market in the States than it is in Canada. Uh, as constant, like there is a gr much greater population, we are ten percent of the population. And if you're saying that a three hundred million person population, each of them now obviously excluding minors and people who are not mentally fit to own guns, uh, everyone else can own a gun legally. That that I understand. So you see what I'm saying? But, 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 but my question, but, but, but that's, that's 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 why I made, that's why I ask guns per capita, right? Because that's guns per person. So if per person, you're saying that the, the, the statistics I'm using are not just based on, they're not broad statistics, right? I narrowed them down. I said per person. And the assumption was, and the result, the reason for the assumption was based on gun restriction. That's, that was the reason for the assumption, right? There are less restrictive laws in the States. So by definition, or at least by our, our, our general assumption, per person, I didn't say... The, the, the total number i said per person per person there are more guns right there are more illegal guns the the best way to do that or the best way to have less or, or less illegal guns just by definition of what we've just said is to make to have slightly stricter laws and this the reason why like the law doesn't contradict what is being shown on screen right now is not all guns are being taken away some guns are being taken away so you still yeah, have the right. option to protect your family with firearms. So, yes, you know. but if, so if these guns this. are, if these guns are in Canada, if yes, there's still violence. But if these guns are not the problem, don't you think that if the, in the United States, if do you believe that if they had stricter or they had more gun, uh, more gun laws or you know stricter gun control, do you believe that the influx of guns or illegally smuggled guns would uh, would cease or at, at least the minimum dramatically decrease what i will say with almost net almost um or, or what i will say from the argument that we've had so far with somewhat logical certainty is that if the u.s had stricter gun laws there would be less illegal guns per capita yes meaning no, listen, in in the end meaning that there would be less illegal firearms coming into canada because the main sure. issue here in, the main issue here in Canada and the shooting in Nova Scotia is a prime example of that is that there the problem is is it illegally smuggled firearms so nana i i uh, i don't mean to be the bearer of bad news but you're trying to have the argument go both ways because in the first part of our segment you're mm -hmm. essentially arguing uh well hey guys look what the situation is in Canada is it doesn't, what Mr. Trudeau's ban is doing is he's striking the best balance that he could because yes. illegally guns are always going to exist. Yes. But, but now you're saying we need stricter guns in our neighbor states that's bringing, that's causing illegal No, I'm not saying that you, uh, the USA country. should have stricter gun laws. I, I, I never said that. I said that, I said, okay, okay, I, I, okay. Uh, I know, I sounds talk, like you okay. did. Please, please tell me if I'm not making sense. I, uh, the question was, what, how many people in the USA, right? How many people, do we assume that there are more illegal guns per person in the USA than in Canada? The, the general agree, like the general consensus was yes, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Then I said, the reason why we came to that conclusion is because there are stricter gun laws in Canada than in the US, correct? Yeah. Yes. 
Now I said, the reason why then this bill makes sense is because it is imposing stricter gun laws without taking guns away, which means actually, if you think about what the, the, the conclusion we've just drawn, mm -hmm. there will be less illegal guns per capita in Canada by banning, by having stricter gun laws by this particular ban. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, no, I'm not that, projecting onto the US. That conclusion doesn't fall down, okay? No, no, let me blow your mind for a second. Sure. Do you know that per capita, Switzerland has one of the highest rates of gun ownership? Sure. Did you know that? Uh, Dan had said that previously, yes. So, so Switzerland has one of the highest rates of gun ownership in any country across the world, comparative to not far behind from the United States. But they don't have a very high number of A, illegal firearms, and they don't have B, which is more important, they don't have the prevalence of uh, homicides and mass shootings that per capita, even if you compare it per capita, because it's obviously demographically a much smaller country, but comparative to the United States, they still have a large amount of gun possession, but very small amount of shootings and homicides. Can so I add on? You can't directly attribute a ban or a stricter uh, policy on, on uh, restraint on gun ownership to correlate directly to less violence or less homicides or less illegality because on the other side of that coin you see switzerland and they don't have the issue that the u.s has but switzerland Pinos, there is yeah. one point to make though because does switzerland border as canada borders with a country that has a constitutional right to bear arms does the same apply to switzerland is there a neighboring country where there's going to be a high level of uh, immigration or, you know, back and forth travel where those countries will have licensed owners as much as the States does? But I think that this right here is a key, this is going to be a key point. So whereas as we neighbor the United States that has poor re gun regulation mm -hmm. in Europe, most of the countries around Switzerland have strict gun measures. So if by having, if the United States, if you look at Switzerland, technically, if the U.S. were to have stricter gun laws, there would be less gun crime happening in the neighboring countries, such as Switzerland is a prime example. So, okay. 